Hi there, welcome to Elm Colors, I'm Erica. On today's video, we are going to be doing a color along in Fragile World by Kirby Rosanis. This is part of the wonderful two weeks of Kirby uh, hosted by Shannon over at Color and Craft with Shani Blue. And I will be chatting with you all in the um, chat down below. Uh, but you know, all of this is pre-recorded, so um, I will do my best to answer any questions that you have as I'm chatting with you all. Uh, I do want to just get a couple things out of the way first. So we're gonna be coloring this gorgeous elephant page today. And I am going to be using my Neo Colors. We're gonna start with the background. That's what I typically start with when I have these big pages. Um, Actually, I'm not all just the background, but I'm going to work on the elephant as well. I, I know I want to have a few areas on the elephant where I have different colors kind of mixed in. And um, I want a, a nice um, background that's kind of blended in together. So, yeah, so that's what we're going to we're going to start with. I do need to get a backer page and then we will get started. Okay, so to start, I am using my Neo Color set. So I have 40 of the Neo Colors. These are the colors that I have available. We're going to start with, oh, and here's my inspiration image. So I'm gonna do almost the same kind of background, very similar. And then I'm gonna take some of my color um, inspiration from the for, for the elephant from this image as well. So um, I think that's gonna be a nice a nice look. So we're gonna start with, let's do, let me grab some of these greens. So I have emerald green, I have grass green, and I have yellow green to start with. I'm gonna start with my grass green. Um, and I really love these, especially this Kirby book uh, works really well. Well, the, the one page that I've done in this book worked really well with my Neo color, so I'm excited to see how this works. I'm hoping it works well, because this is kind of, um, you know, I've been talking about this this video, this page, all month, and I just want to make sure that it's nice and nice. <laughs> it's a good page for you all. Um, yeah, so I'm just going to add all of my, I'm going to add this grass green down here at the bottom. And when I go through to do to color the grass, I'll probably use markers down at the bottom here just to make that go a little faster. I do like to use, I'm gonna do one more thing really quick. I am going to add some washi tape along the border here so that I don't get my color onto this page because I don't want that. So when I put washi tape on, I, you know, I'll measure out how much I need and then I stick it on my jeans or my shirt or, you know, whatever I've got handy so that it gets rid of some of the stickiness so that when I take it off, it's not going to rip my page up because I've had that happen too many times <laughs> uh, and I don't like it. Okay. Get that all in there. All right. Got that all tacked down. Next, I'm going to go, I'm going to start using this um, yellow green color just back here behind the elephant. I'm usually pretty messy with my uh, first layer of Neo colors. I just kind of scribble it on and just let it kind of go where it wants to go. <laughs> okay, I think that's as far as up as I want to do my greens. I'm probably going to use this this darker green in kind of a more of a watercolor way. So I'll be picking that up off of either directly off of the stick or off of my palette. I do want to get some yellow in here. So I'm going to use some of this yellow and some of this. Uh, maybe not that one. I want one that's like more golden. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. Okay, so we're going to continue some of this green up this way. I don't know what kind of monkeys these are either, so that's going to be something that I need to figure out. Okay, so let's get some yellow. And this is the, this is the lemon color from my Neo Colors. And again, you know, if you have any kind of watercolor that you would like to use in, in place of this, it's, you know, 
whatever you have. You don't have to go out and buy the same exact supplies I have. Um, you might not always get exactly the same effect, but um, there are definitely um, budget brands of these, these water-soluble um, crayons. I know Corey from Colorfully Optimistic does have a video out there where she talks kind of about um, the differences between them and what you can get, you know, what you can expect for how much you pay and everything. So, okay. All right, there's my background all scribbled in. I'm just gonna go through and activate that with some water and I'm gonna um, speed that up so you guys can see, but I will uh, be right back with you and we'll move on to the next step. Okay, so that is that first layer done. It's still a little wet. I'm gonna go ahead and go in with my darker green here, and I'm gonna get quite a bit of water on my brush. Make sure I got enough flow in there. And I'm gonna just kind of walk the color in in like swirly patterns and try to create just like a little bit of texture. I don't want it to be solid. I want it to kind of have some movement and um, kind of resemble watercolor more than just like a straight solid um, coverage. So you can see I'm, I'm kind of pouncing my brush every once in a while. Um, that's one of the things I really like about these watercolor brushes is they you can just kind of beat them up <laughs> and they're not too expensive to replace. So um, all right, I like that. I'm going to do that again as well with my grass green color. Make sure I have good water flow. Pick up the color straight from the, the stick. And then I'm just going to pounce things in. And just kind of like random areas. And then I'm going to clean off my brush a little bit and try to make that look a little bit better <laughs> with just a clean brush. Okay. Okay, I feel like that looks a little bit more watercolory. That's good. Um Yeah, I think that that's the background done. Um definitely one of my favorite ways to do backgrounds, quick and easy. Uh and I really like the way that looks. So yeah, so let's move on to the next step. I think I'm going to work on Let's sh let's go ahead and just start with the elephant. Um, I'm gonna, again, use my Neo Colors as a base. I might come back through and do some shading. We'll see how this goes. I do wanna make sure that I have some browns mixed in and light grays and dark grays. Um, I do want my um, grays to be a little warmer on the warmer side, so I will probably be adding brown to my gray as well. Um, and then I'm gonna make sure, you know, I leave like a, a lighter area in the center of the elephant's uh, trunk and then you know up at the top here it's going to be a little bit lighter certain parts of his ears will be a little lighter um, so yeah that's that's my game plan so let me grab I have two grays in this set uh, I'm going to go ahead and start with my lightest gray and I'm also going to add in probably a little bit of this ochre ochre color um, now depending on how hard you press with your neo colors will determine how much color you get and how, what kind of color payout you get so for this guy I'm just gonna do we're just gonna do like a light layer medium medium pressure on this one and I'm just gonna go ahead and do his whole body with this color because it's super light and um, I don't need to worry too much about um, the shadows with this one. So this one I'm just going to kind of add a, a light layer or a medium, medium pressure layer over the whole elephant. And then as I add in different colors, 
um, we'll work on the shading a little bit. Okay. And then um, I don't think I'm going to do that color in the background. I'm just going to go ahead with the darker gray. Specifically because it's such a dark shading back in there. There are a couple of lighter areas, so I'll just add a little bit of the light gray into those areas that are a little lighter, uh, maybe even a little bit of white so that I can keep some of that lightness. Uh, I'm going to do a little bit of white through the center of his trunk, just a little. Um, let's go ahead now with this brown color. So this is going to be a very, very light touch. And I'm just, just barely touching the paper. So you can see a little bit of color did, you know, make its way onto there, but I'm hoping that it will blend together really nicely with the grays. And, um, I'm just going to do that on his body to start with so that I can see, you know, what kind of effect that has. Okay, so let me activate this and we'll see how we did. I'm gonna start in the lighter areas and then work my way towards the darker. It's kind of, that's a pretty good warm brown. So the other thing I'm going to do is because I'm going to be using water-based markers on these uh, grass blades and stuff later, I'm going to go ahead and just activate the color and try to dab it off a little bit. But that way it'll just, that way the marker won't pick up the color later on because that can happen since it's a water-based. Uh, these are both water-based materials. Okay, so let's see how we did here. All right, I do like that color. I think it's gonna be a nice warm, really nice warm gray for Mr. Elephant here. Okay, so now I'm gonna add a little bit of the, um, what is this one? I think this is just brown. I think it's just brown. Uh, I'm gonna add a little bit of that. Um, where am I gonna add that? <laughs> I think I'm gonna add it just a little bit around here. Again, this is a really light layer. We're gonna add a little bit around this area. Um, just kind of across his forehead, maybe a little bit over here. And this is not, you know, like I said before, that I don't have any really um, set plan when I start coloring with these. I'm just kind of placing color where I think I might want some. Uh, I am going to place this darker gray in a couple of places where the shadows are a little darker. Um, so like around the eye here. And the nice thing about the Kirby books is they already have like he already has the, the shadows kind of drawn in for you, so you don't have to think about it too hard. Super handy. All right, let me get a little bit of color over on his other ear. And again, we're gonna add in some browns here and there. using this brown ochre now and then along his cheek he's going to have a little bit here and a little bit here and then we'll have a few spots on his trunk that have a little bit of extra color including these lovely little shrubs and stuff that are growing all over him so I'm going to first do this and then we'll probably come back in with um pencil possibly to add in a little bit of green around where the shrubs and stuff are 
Okay, so I'm going to try to I'm going to activate this and see how we did on this one now. All right, so I've done the ear a little bit here. I think I'm gonna have to add a little bit more gray on top of where I have put the browns, just because I think it might be a little too bright. I wanna tone it down, so I'm gonna use this gray and tone that down just a little bit. Okay. Oh, I wanted to do just a tiny bit. Um, again, this is me barely touching the page but I'm going to do again another all over like really light coat of this um, ochre color just to make it a nice warm brown instead of um, cool like cool tones. Okay, so there is the base layer for the elephant. I think it looks good. I like the little touches of brown here and there. I think that's gonna work well. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and do the trees here. Um, again, I'm just gonna do just a, a layer of um, brown. Um, maybe we'll do just go ahead and do a little bit of shading with this raw umber too. So I'm just gonna do a layer of brown first. And then I will add in some of the raw umber in places where I want a little bit more shadow. Okay, so I'm gonna add in a few spots with this raw umber. Um, we're gonna have kind of this side of the tree be a little bit more in shadow. gonna go ahead and add in some darker brown I'll probably shade this in a little bit more with my pencils because you can see kind of where the trees continue down into the um, the grass down there but once I get the marker work done then I'll come back in and use some pencils and add that so for now we're just gonna go ahead and activate all of the brown that I just put on just going to do the same thing here on the other side with these trees and the inside edges will be lighter and the outside edges will be darker yeah. okay for this next part I'm going to be using a combination of some markers so I have two Tombow markers I have 131 and 245 I have a Crayola green just a dark green marker then I have this awesome zig brushables marker this is the color spring green so there's a lighter and a darker and they're both brush tip on the ends. So I'm going to be using a combination of these four markers um, on the greenery and we'll see how that goes. This is again just kind of like more of a base layer than it is um, you know the finished product but um, yeah I'm gonna I'm gonna see how how it goes. So up the top here I'm gonna start with this 131. This is a really kind of yellowy green so uh, I might grab an, a yellow too. Let me see what I have here. Yeah, I also have this Zig Brushables in pure yellow. Uh, and I like this lighter color. So I might um, just do like the tips of some of the, the shrubs in this color. I already have a few of them that have a little bit of yellow on them from... Uh, the background so it's not not too hard to give it a little bit more yellow so I'm going to start with this lighter color and I'm just adding it here and there and then as I add the darker colors it'll kind of it's not really going to blend because the, the water-based markers don't blend super great but it will look 
more three-dimensional, if that makes any kind of sense. Uh, and I'm not really worried about making sure it's perfect or anything. I just want a little bit of yellow in some of the areas uh, on the trees. Okay, so then I'm gonna go to my next darkest color. We're gonna add a little bit of green. So this is kind of randomly hitting different areas that I want some of this color to be. Um, no real direction or anything. I'm just kind of trying to hit as much, you know, just kind of randomly all over the page. And then, like I said, this is this is definitely kind of more of a base layer. So if it looks crazy, I can come back in and fix it with my pencils. But I just like to do this on, especially like these bigger um, Kirby books, because it just makes the page go so much faster. And, you know, if I have to do every little tiny thing in pencil, I would probably go insane. Um, so, yeah. So this is my next step is I'm going to go in the, to the darker areas now with the next darkest green that I have. So you can kind of see how that's starting to look a little bit more modeled. So that it looks like there's a bunch of different like depth and shading and all kinds of stuff. In the bushes and the trees. And then I will be able to come in with like my um, colored pencils to do the, or even a marker maybe, to do the branches and stuff. So I'm not, I'm trying to avoid them, but if I get over top of it, I'm not I'm not extra worried about that. Okay. So like I said, this is probably going to look like a hot mess for a little bit, but you just have to keep going. Keep with it. And it'll work out in the end. I have used water-based markers many times in my Kirby books. So I know that it, it takes a little bit of playing, but it eventually gets there. All right, so we're going to add some green in places here. And again, I'm just kind of adding it randomly. You can kind of see I'm just kind of pouncing this little brush all over the place. I'm not really, I don't have a set plan in mind. I'm just kind of Anywhere where there's like the darker shading, I'm gonna add that color in and then, um, yeah. Oh, I didn't add any up here. I gotta get a little bit up here. Okay, and then I'm gonna look at this and kind of think if there's anything else I wanna do. Um, I might go through and add just this one more darker color. I'm gonna let this dry a little bit though because if I go over the same the marker in the same place too many times, that can bleed through. So I'm gonna let this dry a little bit and when we come back, I will work with this darker color in um, a few of the really darker shaded areas on the, on the trees. And then we're probably gonna use these two colors down here on the leaves and stuff. So, all right, so I will talk to you again here in a second. Okay, so now we're gonna use this darker green color and I'm going to put it everywhere in the, like those super darkest areas where there's a ton of shading. I'm gonna be a little bit more careful with this bit. I know I was kind of speeding through the other colors, but I'm really gonna try to f concentrate and figure out where, this is a little bit more thinking than <laughs> what has been previously involved. So I'm just going in all of the really darkest shadowy bits in here and adding this dark green and I'm I'm holding it pretty far back on the on the marker because I don't want to I don't want to push too hard I don't want the paper to like be saturated or anything um, I just want to yeah just get the, the darkest bits This is one of the reasons I like the brush tips though is because you can you just have can get this like really um, delicate touch um, and even though it's a marker it's still 
looks like it's, I don't know, shaded a little bit more than just like street market marker coloring would be. I don't know if that makes any sense. <laughs> but I often talk like that and often don't make a lot of sense. So it's pretty normal for for an Erica video. <laughs> uh, okay. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna zoom you in just a little bit so you guys can see kind of what I'm I'm doing on that part. I know it's far out, so you can't really see what it's gonna like. When I look at it, it's gonna look a lot different than what it looks like for you on screen. So let me just zoom you in, and you'll see what I mean. All right. So hopefully, I'll remember to make sure I stay on camera but uh, we'll see how this goes. So basically, I mean, you can kind of see how spotty it looks when you're up close like this, but farther away, it probably looked all right. Um, but it's gonna look cool, I promise, when it's done. <laughs> Trust the process. You know, that's always that it looks, it's gonna look worse before it looks better kind of thing. So I'm just trying to get in all of these little shadowy bits just trying to and I'm just like like I said just barely touching the marker to the page so we need a little bit more I'm gonna add a little bit more of this green in here too just add a little bit of green Oop, I didn't get any green in this one either boy I just skipped all over the place uh, I did realize I was doing this backwards though as I as I was working. Um, I should have started with my darkest color and then gone, you know, in reverse. Uh, but I am going to come back over top of all of this with my lightest green color again and um, hope that that it works out okay because <laughs> I was just not thinking when I started that. Okay. Oh, my tea's in the way. Okay, we're gonna scoot up just a little so that you're in frame. And this one is a little harder because uh, there's not really any defined like super shadows, but anywhere where he's got like those little texture lines, you can assume that there's gonna be a little bit of a shadow behind those or underneath those or however um, it, the line is drawn. So you can add in some darker colors around those lines for sure. Okay, let me, um, when I get some of this stuff over here, and then of course in the back, the ones that are back here in shadow are definitely going to be darker, so, um, yeah, okay, let me get these guys here. We'll do the same on, I think that should be everything. Everything should be in frame now, so I don't have to worry about not, <laughs> not having you guys on screen. That's the good thing. The one good thing about doing the lives is people can yell at you and be like, hey, you're off camera. <laughs> um, with these recorded videos, I sometimes just get in my own world and just completely forget. Completely forget to check the screen. Um, okay, almost done with this bit, and then we will move on. We're going to do a little bit more with the uh, markers. So I'm going to come back in one more time with this lightest, the light green color that I have. This isn't the yellow, right? This is the green. I think so. Yeah, okay, this is my green. So we're going to start back up top, and I'm just going to color in the whole... Um, foliage with that color. Um, trying to avoid the areas that where I have the yellow already. It's not really going to change it too much because this is such a light green color, but it will at least, you know, look like there's um, total color. Okay, so I don't know if you guys saw that, but just there, so right here in this little area, it's a tiny bit, but I have to be careful. Um, there was a little bit of 
um, nail color that hadn't been activated and I picked it up with my marker and just kind of smeared it a little bit. Now it's it's not too much so it'll blend in pretty nicely but you got to be aware of, of that stuff sometimes too. Okay yeah so I'm just going to go through and add this green color anywhere where there's foliage. And you'll notice here, I've got a little bit outside of the um, the shrubs, but I'm gonna kind of extend that color out anyway with some uh, pencils. I'm gonna add a little bit of um, more moss, I guess, I don't know. I'm just gonna extend where the, where the color is already with my pencils and it's gonna make it look, oh, I'm off key. <laughs> See, I knew that I was that was gonna happen. Let me get back up here and get these up here really quick and then we'll move back down. Um, I'm gonna add just a little bit more. Don't wanna go over the same area too many times because I really do not want it to bleed through, but as long as you're, like these, these Tombow markers are so good about that because there's, there's not, too much liquid but like if you go you know over and over and over the same place it's definitely going to bleed through but if you're moving around and letting things dry in between you should be good okay let me get this side over here and then we'll do a double check just to make sure that we're not bleeding through um before we move on to the grasses and stuff at the bottom okay Got a little bit up here, and all of those trees. <laughs> wow, I need to, I need to pay attention. All right, I think that looks pretty good. Um, I might not do a whole lot actually with adding in more, um, more shading. Okay, so let me grab these other darker greens. I know I want this super dark green to be in the shadow areas and the leaves that are in the background. So I'm just gonna go ahead and add those in. So I'm just kind of touching this green in between like leaves and, and all the shadowy bits. I'm going to speed this up just so you guys can see a little bit of it, but then I'll probably just um, cut to this, this part being done. It's really, like I said, just finding all of those darkest um, shadows and then adding in a little bit of that green color. First layer of color I'm going to use my Tombow now 245 and um, do the next bit so I'm going to continue from the darkest color that I put down and I'm just gonna kind of shade things here and there The plants in the front are gonna be a little bit lighter green, so I'm trying to avoid getting as much color on them as possible, but it's not always super easy because I am a messy colorist. <laughs> so if I get some color on there, it's okay. I can just kind of color over top and we'll see how everything goes. So for these, this is just going to be like a color faded piece of grass. All of these guys will be. So the lightest color will go kind of along the top part of it. 
hopefully blend a little bit, but if not, then that's okay. Um, and the areas where the elephant, like the elephant's feet might show up, I've got a few spaces where I've left it open, but for the majority of it, I'm just coloring right over top because I don't want to deal with having to get gray down in there. So it can just look like it's part of the, um, the background there. So you can see I'm just kind of flicking um, color into spaces. And I picked these colors specifically because they kind of went with the um, the background color that I put on. So these kind of true greens are normally brighter than I would do on a um, a normal like foliage. I normally will have more yellow greens and mossy greens kind of worked in, but. Um, I don't know, I just thought it went well with the, the background. Okay. All right, now we're going to be working kind of backwards, so I'm just going to go now to this. Oh, you know what? I'm going to add on this side, I'm going to add a few strokes of this, this one green that we've got here. There we go. All right, I'm just trying to get all the green kind of covered up in the background there. Okay, okay, this one now is I'm gonna flick from those guys. Um, some of these plants here, I'm gonna save those for this next, the next lightest color and do those in that color and not the darker one, but like the grasses and stuff in the background and the taller grasses and things, those can all be this green. Okay. Uh, I might flick some color with this one, but then the rest of it's gonna be light. There we go. All right, so the few areas that I have left open, actually there's a couple of blades of grass back here. And then this one, so I'm just using the lightest color that I have now and I'm doing, or the lighter color on the zig brushables and I'm just kind of filling in any holes that I see. Um, and what I've done so far. Okay, and then like here, I know that I'm gonna extend this color out. Uh, and then again, on this side, just filling in wherever I um, decided not to color because I am a messy colorist. There's no shame in that. It happens. Okay, this is all grass, so that needs to all be colored in. Completely skipped over large portions of this background with my markers. Okay. All right, I'm gonna add a little bit of shadow here with this darker color. Not, it's not really darker, but um, I'm gonna come back in with my lightest um, green marker to do like the shrubs and stuff to finish those up but I wanted a little bit of difference in here all right last color for the base here we go and this I can just basically scribble wherever because um, 
it's the lightest color. So this is what I mean meant by earlier when I was talking about how I should have probably come in with a darker color first and then gone like worked backwards because then I can take this light color and just kind of make sure everything has has some color. I am going to come in with a pencil in a couple of spots just to make sure that I've got some nice definition between um, some of the plants in the foreground and the background. So just really kind of darken up some of those shadows. That's really the only reason that I'll use that specifically in that area there. But so it looks crazy here, but if I zoom you out, it looks pretty good, right? Or am I just crazy? <laughs> okay. All right, so next I think I'm gonna um, break out some pencils and we will get to work on some shading and um, then we'll be just about done with this beautiful page. So let me grab my pencils, I'll be right back with you. Okay, so I have got some Artex pencils here and I'm going to use a few of the different greens to work on my foliage. I've got this dark green, I have grass green and I have apple green. So that's gonna help me add in a little bit I'm really probably gonna use mostly this dark green. Um, we're gonna see, I think this will be all right. I might need to let it dry a little bit. Let's start up the top actually. So I'm gonna, again, mostly be using the dark green and I'm just adding it to the very darkest areas first. And I'm, I'm not pushing hard and this is just helping to kind of solidify that green color that I put in there already, basically. And if I need even darker greens, because, well, I only have the 72 Artex set, so I would have to use, use some black in here, which I'm trying not to do, but it wouldn't be terrible if I had to do it. But basically I'm just, just adding the, the dark green in places. Okay, so we're just gonna do this this tree really quick just so you guys can see kind of what my game plan is and then I'll, I'll speed up some of the other tree process for you. Um, okay, so now I'm gonna move to the next lightest color which is the grass green and I'm just, again, just extending the color from where I put that dark green. And this is really the, the whole process that I would use if I had just done this with pencils anyway. So the, the markers just really help to speed it up a little bit. Because otherwise all of these leaves and everything would have taken me ages and I would have been grumpy by the time I <laughs> was done. And I don't wanna, I don't wanna be grumpy with my Kirby books at the moment because I, I'm doing them all month. <laughs> Okay, so now I have apple green, and that's the lightest one, so I just wanna make sure that it kinda gets into the lighter areas. I'm gonna leave some of the leaves like really yellow and some of them are gonna be mostly green. So you can kind of see where that's gone. All right, so there's a weird marker thing in here. So I'm gonna color around that line that I made with my marker and just kind of cover that up a little bit more. Okay, that looks a little bit better. All right. Okay, so I think that looks pretty good. I am gonna do one more step and I'm, I am gonna end up using my black, which I was gonna try not to do, but um, this is just to really darken up a few of the shadows in here. Just so you can kind of see that it's very, like there's so much depth in the in the tree. And it's just in those certain areas where the, the shadow is darkest. Okay, so 
one just in here. A little bit up in there, right next to the branch. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry if my screen is flipping back and forth. I forgot to lock it on the focus. So hopefully that wasn't too bad. Um, but yeah, so that's basically what I'm going to do for the entire. So I don't know if you can really see the difference between like this side and this side. Um, other than maybe the, the shadows being a little bit darker. Um, there might be like a smoother transition from one uh, color to the next. That's kind of what the pencils are doing is they're just coming in here and helping it blend from one color to the next, basically. All right, so I think that's good. So I'm gonna go ahead and speed this up. Um, I will make sure I lock my focus and um, we'll, get, we'll get all of this greenery um, colored in. So I'll talk to you guys here in a second. Okay, before I finish all the foliage, I wanted to show you kind of how I'm gonna extend the greenery a little bit. So I'm just using my lightest color and I'm just gonna kind of extend the color into the elephant a little bit more. And just kind of following a weird random pattern, like there's no, um, set plan. I'm gonna add a little bit darker around the shrubs. So I'm just using the apple green and the grass green here and just kind of, so I think I'll do that a little bit in some of the areas on the elephant. Um, yeah, I kind of like that. Okay, so I'm just going to get back to coloring all this in and um, yeah, when I come back, you guys will see all of the greenery at the top. We'll get that all, all done. So I will talk to you again here in a second. All right, so we got all the greenery done at the top part. Now we're gonna work on the grass here at the bottom. I'm going to zoom you back in a little bit. So I'm probably going to use just a few of the, maybe a little bit of the black and a tiny bit of the dark green, just in the really dark areas, like the darkest areas in here. Um, specifically like where things are going to be in shadow, where things will be creating shadow. I'm going to go with the black first, and then I'm going to use the dark green right over top of it, just to kind of create a um, more of a green tone instead of that like dirty black I don't know that dirty is the right <laughs> the right term there but you guys know what I mean like I really want a nice dark shadow but I don't want it to just be straight black I want it to have some some green to it so this is basically what I'm doing. I'm going to go through and just highlight a few leaves here and there. Anywhere where it's going to be super dark, I'm definitely going to add in some shadows there. Where things overlap, I'll try to add in a little bit of shadow. Um, I might use... Hmm. Well, I was going to grab my white Prismacolor, but I don't see where I've put it, of course. So... We won't be doing that. <laughs> All right, so let's let's see. I'm just going to kind of go across the whole page, kind of highlighting different um, plants, kind of making them stick out a little bit more from the background, so you guys can kind of see what I'm doing. I'm going to um, record this while I work on it and speed it up a little bit for you, but. Um, 
basically just the same kind of process, just finding the really dark areas and anywhere where things would be in shadow. So like behind this shrub, there's gonna be quite a bit of shadow. So I'm gonna kind of outline that a little bit and then come in with my dark green and try to blend it a little. But yeah. All right, so I'm just gonna speed this up and I will talk to you guys again here in a second. Right, so there at the end uh, I used my apple green a little bit to kind of blend the um, the lighter leaves a little bit more I still have some spots here where you can see where I've definitely messed up and gone over with the, the pencils but it's not a big deal so I'm not really gonna overly worry about that I think that that looks pretty good uh, I am going to get started on this part up here so the rocks and the stairs and I have some grays um, that I thought that I would use, I think. Let me double check my pencils here. All right, so I have some grays and I have my um, dark umber. That's not what I meant to grab. I meant to grab the dark brown. <laughs> so I have the dark brown and my goldenrod. So I'm gonna use a combination of these on the um, the stones and stuff up here. I also need to come through and do these other little bits of trees. So we'll do that too. I do have, actually I'm going to do that really quick. I have my Arteza Ink Onic fine liner, but you can use any fine liner, any brown fine liner. And I'm just going to go through and um, especially on any of the trees that are tiny, I'm just going to use this brown fine liner and just get those colored in so that I don't have to try to do it with a pencil because it's much easier with this fine liner. Especially on these tiny trees back here. I think that's the last little bit that I need to color in. Yeah, okay. Oh no. <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and do these guys too. The nice thing about the fine liners is it goes over the pencil and the um, nail colors that I have already put down. So I might do a little bit of shading on the trees, but I don't think I'm going to do that much because it, it already has a nice darker edge. I might come through and trace a little bit of the texture of the trees. But yeah, let's focus on the on the rocks. So I'm going to start with my 70% warm gray. I'm going to add that in all of the shadowy bits. So anywhere where Kirby has those darkest... Hatch, hatch marks for the shading. And I'm not pushing super hard on this. This is just kind of a medium pressure um, layer. And when the when the lines aren't quite as as um, dense, I'm going to use lighter pressure. And when they are more closely together, I'm going to use a heavier pressure. All right. So after this, I'm going to use my, I think I'm going to use the next warmest gray. And then we'll start adding in a little bit of brown here and there, and then we'll use the lightest gray. I think that's my game plan. Then I still don't know what I'm gonna do with the monkeys. Still trying to figure out what kind of monkeys they are, I don't really know. I 
I guess I don't need to know exactly what kind they are. I just need to have some color on them, really. I mean, I can make pink monkeys for all, <laughs> all that really matters, right? Okay. So the next lightest gray is my 50% warm gray. I do like the Artex grays. I'm glad that they have warm and cool grays because, you know, a lot of the times when you buy pencils that are a little less expensive, you don't get that range in the grays. You just get a gray or maybe two grays, like a light gray and a dark gray, and they could they could be warm or dark or one warm and one dark. It just is kind of like a lottery, but I like having the varying, the, the different shades of gray. Like, I think that's one, one of the reasons why I like Prismacolor so much is because there's, what, I mean, I don't even know how many grays are in that. Uh, and the same with my Polychromos. I love all the grays in there. At first, I wasn't sure when I started coloring. I was like, I didn't know. I was like, why do I need so many grays? What's the point of that? <laughs> and I started coloring. I was like, oh, there are, you need, you need grays all the time for shading, for, you know, everything from white to black to, you know, every color in between. You can always use a gray to help with something. Whether you want to tone the color down, whether you want to have... You know, I, I don't know. You know what I mean. You know what I'm saying. Yeah, when I first got them, though, I was like, why are there so many grays? It's stupid. Why? Who's going to color everything that gray? Evidently, I am. Okay, so I'm going to use the um, dark brown, and I'm going to just add it in a few spots where I've already added a little bit of the gray. Um, to start from the darker areas and work out into the more open areas. And I'm holding the pencil pretty far back so that I have a little bit of control over how much pigment goes onto the page. I'm not adding a ton, just a few little spots here and there. But you can already see it, it already has warmed it up even more um, than just the warm grays by themselves. I might add in a little bit of green in here too, just to make it look like there's some moss and stuff growing on the on the rocks. Okay. Next we're gonna go to the goldenrod, and I'm gonna add this in just like the lightest areas. Not all of the lightest areas, but a few. And again, I'm holding the pencil even farther back for this one because I just barely want the lead to touch the page. Just want it to skim the top there. And just barely put a tiny bit of pigment on the paper. It took me forever to figure out how to hold my pencils like this too. And I was I would see people do it. I'm like, what? That's so weird. Why would you why do you need to adjust your pencil? And it it just feels um, like second nature now. Okay. All right. I like that. So now we're going to use the lightest gray, which is the 20% warm gray. And again, this is a light layer and I'm going to go over the whole bunch of the rock, the whole thing. And normally if I was using my Prisma colors, I would probably come through with like a, either a cream or a white and try to blend everything together, but this is looking pretty decent so far. So I think I'm just gonna leave it like this. I don't think I need to do any more blending. This light gray is probably doing enough. Okay, I am gonna add a little bit more gray down here and a little bit more of the brown and then that medium gray there because I think that was, I'm pretty sure that's supposed to be stone. All right, that looks pretty good. Uh, make sure that I get enough color up here. I don't really want any white. I want it to, you know, look very much gray, but even with this real light gray, sometimes that white shows through a little bit. All right, let me figure out what I'm gonna do about these monkeys. All right, so I have my, I have beige, um, the dark brown, 
and the um, burnt ochre here. I'm going to try a combination of these. All right, we're going to start on this monkey. I'm going to add the dark brown in the, like, pushing harder where the shadows are in here. And then I'm going to lighten up the pressure, but still do a light layer of that brown kind of everywhere, except for the face and the chest. I'm going to use um, that lightest color. So I'm going to do a light layer of the burnt ochre. And I'm going to try to use this beige color on the face and the chest and see if that works. So these monkeys are super tiny, but you can still get some pretty good shading and dimension on them. I think that's good. These Artex pencils aren't quite as opaque as like the Prismacolors would be, but still kind of covered up where I got the green all over that poor guy. All right, same thing up here. I'm just going to add just a little bit of dark brown in places, and then we'll blend out with the burnt ochre. A little bit of beige on his face. Just kind of blend that out again with my burnt or with my dark brown. All right, well, let's get this little mom and the, ma and the baby here. So cute. I like to look at the monkeys, but I don't think I would ever like to like hold one. You know how you sometimes see monkeys like in Japan or something and they're just like everywhere. I think that would freak me out. <laughs> Those creatures are too smart to be like, I don't know. I think it's just because they're so smart that I would be worried that they would do something. I don't know. <laughs> That sounds so stupid as I'm hearing myself say it. I'm like, what are you talking about? That might have been a little too dark with the burnt ochre. I don't want her to be red. Although well, maybe she's a little more red because she's the mama. I guess that's all right, huh? Okay, I'm going to use... I think they're little hands and their little faces. I'm sure there's probably supposed to be like white on these monkeys somewhere. Maybe these are little capuchins or I don't know what they are. But typically when I think monkey, I think brown. So that's why they're going to be brown. Just have to make sure you add in all the little shading back in. That looks good. All right, so let's focus on the elephant itself now. I've got um, my grays here. I'm going to bring in this um, goldenrod and the dark brown again too as well, just so I have those on hand. I'm first just going to go through and add in my 70% warm gray in all of the really dark shaded areas. And when I get to the edge of it, I'm going to lighten up my pressure and just kind of bring the color out. So let me show you on a piece of paper what I mean. Well, if I have a piece of paper, handy, hello. Well, we'll just use this. So basically, and I know that most of you probably already know this anyway, but just in case, I use a decent amount of pressure, and then as I move away from where I want, I just lighten up my pressure. So I'm lightening up the pressure, lightening up the pressure, until I'm barely touching the paper, and you can kind of see how that just kind of fades off into the white. So that's what I mean when I say all the time, you know, medium pressure, light pressure, 
hardly touching the page, all of that stuff. It's just kind of, I've um, backed off on the pressure so that I can blend the color into the background. All right, so I'm just gonna speed this part up because this is just gonna be me coloring this this um, in the really darkest areas with my with my darkest gray. So I will talk to you guys again here in a second. Okay, so I just noticed that this is, <laughs> this is not elephant, this is a tree. So I need to come back in with my browns. Hopefully I can do that and it won't be crazy. So I'm just gonna use my pencils. I'm gonna add the dark brown and the edge here. It did just kind of blend in with the elephant, didn't it? it just looked like it was part of, part of the elephant. So I'm just gonna try to get a similar look to what I already have with my pencil here. I can't believe I did that. Um, I'm gonna grab, I'm gonna grab the cream and try to go along the edge. That's not gonna work. I need my, like a Prismacolor cream or a white. I will be right back with you. Okay, so I have a spare cream here and hopefully if I add that in here, it will, oh gosh, I hate when that happens. Tip broke off. Uh, I will kind of add it in here and hopefully that will make it a little more brown-like instead of gray. I don't know. I might add in a little bit of that goldenrod over top of that too, just to, I can't believe I did that. <laughs> I wonder if you guys were all yelling at me when I, when I was coloring it. I was like, that's not a, that's not the elephant. Cause I was looking at this, I was like, why does it look like he's got six legs? But um, three legs on this side, but that's a tree. That's why. All right, so I'm gonna add a little bit of this goldenrod to a few places on the trees here too, just so it kind of has the same yellowy tone. Just in a few spots where it's the lightest. I can't believe I did that. Um, yeah, that was silly. Okay. Well, at least now it's brown and we can kind of tell that it's supposed to be a tree, right? That's so funny. Let me see if I have another brown. I want one more brown to try. Um, let me try with this sienna brown and see if that, because that other one is just making it dark. It's not making it brown. That works a little bit. All right, now let's try to add this. Hold on around back over top of that. There we go. Okay, goodness. All right, let's get back to shading the elephant. <laughs> So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to do this side of the elephant and then we'll kind of focus on the face together and then I'm going to do this side of the elephant separately. Um, I'm not sure I'm where I'm at time-wise, but I just don't want to run out of time. So uh, I'm using the, the medium gray now to blend out that dark gray even more into the elephant's body. Now I know there's a lot of lines on here, so it is sometimes hard to figure out um, what you need to outline and what you need to kind of leave alone. I don't really know because <laughs> there's so many folds in an elephant skin and wrinkles and creases. And so you just kind of have to trust that the artist knows what he's doing, put the darkest shadows where the darkest lines are, and then just kind of guess on the other ones. Like I don't need to outline every single one of these little lines. Um, but when they over, when they cross over themselves and they get, you know, a little 
tangled up in there. It's just kind of a, a guessing game at that point. All right, blend out again with the lightest gray. All right, and then I'm gonna use my brown. I'm gonna add that into the, the really dark shadowed areas. Again, this is just warming up that, that gray just a little bit. Okay, and then I'm gonna use the goldenrod to add in just some different tones in the lighter areas, just so you can kind of see that there's a good variation of skin color and different things like that. All right, I'm switching back to the 70, because I feel like this is too harsh of a transition from light to dark, so I'm just gonna add a little really light shading just to try to blend it together a little bit more. And again, you can see how far I'm holding my pencil back, just so I can get a nice light coat. All right, and then I might add in some more black in like the super dark areas, specifically where like there's different legs or where this branch kind of overlaps the elephant under his ear here. That would be really in shadow. Along his face. And then down under here for sure. Okay, so that's what that side's gonna look like. Let's work on the ear. Again, I'm gonna go with my medium gray and just kind of blend out where I was adding in all that dark gray. All right, I'm gonna use the light gray now, kind of all over. The nice thing about using your pencils on top of the water mediums too is that it helps you kind of flatten out the page because this was getting a little warped from the water that I had used, but now it's, it's smoothing out really nice. Okay, let's add in some brown in these darker areas. I do like how um, the it looks with the, like the green extended away from the shrubs into the elephant's skin. I think that looks kind of neat. And then I'm gonna add this goldenrod color in a couple of spots. And then we'll kind of outline again with the black just so that it is a nice good transition. I'm gonna add in too, I'm just gonna go back in with my 70% warm gray and try to add in a little bit of shadow like right up along underneath this. The greenery, I know that it, it's got some green coming out from it, which I still wanna, I wanna maintain a little bit, but I want it to be in a good amount of shadow. So I'm gonna do the same thing down here where I know the shadows would be created. I just wanna make sure that there's a good, a nice shadow there. Try to blend them out a little bit with the, the apple green. All right, so there's what that this side is going to look like, okay? So that's kind of the same thing. And then we're going to work on his face. So up here, I know that I want this area around in here to be highlighted a little bit. So it's going to be a lighter, a lighter color for sure. And then going down his trunk, I want a section in the, a, a part in the center to be a little bit lighter than, um, than the outsides to try to show that it was a little, you know, it was like a, it's a rounded element. Okay, so I'm just gonna add in all the shadows where I think they might need to go. Okay, I'm using a, Next, lightest gray. 
Again, just trying to pay attention to where I want to keep my highlight in there. Let's add in some more colors. We're going to do a little bit of brown down in this area. A little bit more brown here. So I'm pushing a little bit harder just to make sure I get some, some color laid down in there. And I'm going to use my goldenrod to add in some even lighter grays, or lighter grays, lighter browns. Okay. And I'm going to use the black to definitely show that there's a separation here between the stones and the elephant's skin. I want there to be some good shadow in there. Again, I'm going to add this dark gray back in around the shrubs and stuff so that you can see that it's creating a shadow on the elephant as well. Add in this green right back in top here. Okay. Yeah, I think that looks all right. I feel like it's, it's kind of a harsh transition here. So let me see if I can blend that a little bit. Yeah, but on like on the elephant's wrinkles and things like that, you just like I said, you just kind of pick and choose the ones that you want to highlight a little bit more than the others, and it will that'll look really nice. Yeah, I think I might have pushed too hard up here, but I don't know that I can fix it now. <laughs> that looks a little bit better. Yeah, while these do blend, they are definitely not Prisma, so there's no smushing really. They just kind of blend together pretty well. Okay. All right. Um, yeah, let's move on to the rest of his face here. I'm just going to add in my 70% warm gray. Um, close, close 70? Yeah. Wait, that's the darkest. No, I want my 50. Because I'm blending out my 70 right now. I'm going to use the lightest gray now. So we're going to come back in with the brown. And this brown really doesn't do a whole lot. It just kind of just adds a little bit of warmth to all these grays. A little bit more warmth than we had with the warm grays, I guess. I'm also going to apologize if I keep repeating the same thing over and over. I had to take some allergy medicine <laughs> before I... Uh, recorded today and now I'm I'm feeling a little sleepy so yeah there we go all right add in some of this ochre color there's not gonna be a, a ton around here there's just gonna definitely be some on the sides here maybe just a little bit here and there okay I'm gonna come in with the black now I'm really going to make sure that those dark shadows are really dark. So especially like right around the shrubs here. And the corners of his eye. Getting these ridges all around his eye too. Let me get this little bit colored and I feel like this is part that I need to do as well. So now I'm just kind of at random picking <laughs> picking up colors. I'm really just switching back and forth between my, my lighter and my darker grays and then adding in the brown and the and the ochre every once in a while. I'm not really there's no um, new colors coming in. It's just a matter of me trying to figure out my layers here. And the nice thing, again, that having that base layer down there, I don't have to push really hard unless I want like a very distinct, sharp shadow. But even putting this, this gray or this black in right now, it's not, I'm not having to push super hard, which is nice. I do want to make sure that that stands out the right amount. All 
Okay. All right. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to sharpen. Um, no, I'm going to use. No, you know what? I'm just going to do this. So yeah, I'm going to go ahead and sharpen my black. Really good fine point. And I'm going to get in here on these eyes and really darken up the pupils here. Okay. All right. That looks pretty good. I'm going to do the same thing on this side. Just darken up all the black areas. I feel like this, this eye should be bigger because this one is the same as the other one on the other side and it's just not looking quite the same. I'm going to add in a little bit of brown, a little bit of brown. And then just color right over top of that. There we go. Well, the eyes. And again, I'm going to darken up the color, the, just the black lines that are around the elephant's eye. Just so it pops out a little bit more. I think that's looking pretty good. Let's start on the trunk. And I'm gonna do the same thing that I did over here on this side. So like I said, we're just gonna, I'm just gonna finish that, that side off camera, but let's work on the trunk and then we'll do the tusks. And maybe a little bit on the trees. That'll be our last thing on camera to do together. Okay, so I need my grays. Um, I'm going to go through again, just like I did with the rest of the body. I'm going to start with the 70% warm gray. And since none of these shadows are super um, dark, I'm using a pretty light pressure to add in the shadows, except around like the greenery and stuff. I'm going to darken that up just a little bit more. right up in there where there's the right underneath where the it would create the most kind of shadows I'm going to add in a good amount underneath there okay so if I'm thinking about this while I'm doing it just want to make sure that I have a good amount of lighter grays left in the center-ish area. And it's not going to be just a straight line down. So I want to kind of vary the amount of shadow that I bring out. And um, yeah, oops. So this is me holding the pencil really far back and just adding a little bit. Okay, I'm going to do the same thing with my medium gray. So this is the 50% warm gray. And I'm just blending that darker gray out. Some of this might be a little dark down here, but I can work on that a little bit in a minute. We're going to use the lightest gray now. Now I know I want to make sure that this green does kind of blend out really well. So I'm just extending that just a little bit in certain places. I know I did a decent job of doing that over top of the um, neo color earlier, but I just wanna make sure it's in there. Okay, so we're gonna add in a little bit more of this goldenrod. Um, a little bit of brown in some of these darker areas. Again, warming it up a little bit. Okay, I like the way that looks. So I'm just going to continue doing the rest of the trunk um, with my darkest gray.
Okay, so sometimes I forget to um, show you things, but I had a little spot here and a little spot here that I decided were just gonna be more greenery, so I just colored them in with my pencils really quick. Okay, so 50% um, warm gray. Blending out all of the 70%. And again, using my hold, where I'm holding the pencil pretty far back, just so I can kind of control how much pigment gets on the paper. Okay, so that looks pretty good. Let's just blend this all out. I'm going to make this side a little bit darker over here, so I'm going to go back to my 70% um, warm gray and just really get some shadows added in over there. Okay, now I'm going to use the golden rod again in those areas that I've kind of mapped out earlier with my Neo Colors. Holding the pencil pretty far back that I don't accidentally do something I don't want to do. I'm going to add in some brown in some of the darkest areas. Okay. Let's add in a little bit more green extending out from these guys. And then I'm just going to use my black to darken up any super shadows that I have from the shrubs and stuff. All right, so that is what the elephant's gonna look like all the way across. I'm gonna go ahead and finish this side off camera. Um, and then when we come back, we'll do a little bit of work, just a tiny bit more work on the trees. Um, and then maybe I'll add in some embellishment D things um, to make this just look a little bit more magical. Okay, so I will be right back with you guys. Okay, so I did a little bit of shading on the trees over here, just a tiny bit. I'm going to do a little bit on these little tiny baby trees too, so I'm just going to darken up the areas that are super dark or should be super dark, I guess. It's not really gonna be that much of a difference, but I wanted just a tiny bit of shading on these. Okay, and this little guy here, and this little guy here. Okay, so now, basically what I did on the other side is I just made sure to kind of reinforce this darker shadow on my right, on the right side of the trees here. Um, and anytime two trees come together, I usually try to make a nice little shadowy area there too. So you can see this is pretty dark right here already, but um, we're just gonna kind of extend that out a little bit. Uh, the other thing I did is I would randomly come through and just trace some of the, um, the texture lines that Kirby already has on here. Normally when there's not like tree texture on a, on a, um, on a tree like this, I would just go through and make my own little lines like that. Um, but thankfully, I don't have to worry about it because Kirby took care of it for us. That is one of the, literally one of the best things about his books is the fact that he's got all of this texture and dimension and shading and everything already kind of pre-done for you. So you just kind of really have to concentrate on the color. Make sure I'm not off camera here. And I'm going to do a little bit here. And this doesn't add a whole lot. It just adds a little bit, a little bit extra to the page. Again, I'm just adding in that a little bit. And then I will go through and draw on a few more of those texture lines or just kind of highlight some of those texture lines. And if I'm not right on top of them, that's okay. 
these trees are not my focal point, you know, the elephant is, so that'll be all right. Get this darker down here. Hoping you can see what I'm doing. Okay. Light that up a little. All right, that looks pretty good. And then I think our last step, we're going to do the tusks. And then one little fun embellishment, and that'll be that'll be the, the page for us. Okay, so I'm going to use I'm going to use my 20% um, warm gray, the beige color that I have here. Uh, we're going to start with those two. All right, so I'm just putting the 20% warm gray on the darkest parts of the tusk. Let me make sure that I'm in frame here. Sorry, guys. And then I'm just gonna, yeah. See, I don't wanna do too much to the tusks here. Because I want them to be pretty white. Okay, so now I'm just gonna add a little bit of the beige in. Again, holding the pencil pretty far back and just adding a little bit of color in there. And then I do want it a little tiny bit darker in a couple of spots. So I'm going to add in my 50% warm gray in those real dark areas. Okay. All right. So my last little fun embellishment is I have this, this lime green stickles. So I'm, gonna, I'm just going to put it on some of the... Some of the leaves and stuff I don't really need it but it's just it's just a fun a fun little embellishment so basically what I'm gonna do is just kind of pop it in different places and then I'm just gonna pounce um, pounce it with my finger this is how I like to do um, stickles in like larger areas I just kind of pounce it wherever I want oops I don't want it on the monkey <laughs> And try to keep it off of the stonework as well. So I just want it on a few of these trees. More specifically, the ones kind of in or on the elephant that are growing on the elephant because they seem a little more magical than like the, regular, the trees that are surrounding. So that's kind of my thought process here. Um, then I have it all over my fingers, but um, I can use like the extra to get in places where I wanna make sure that I've got some. Okay, so I'm gonna add in and all the little mossy bits too. Again, I don't want this to be like saturated with stickles, so just, just a little bit of shine kind of spread throughout. And I can just get some of it off with my finger and use this towel that I have next to me. Wipe my fingers off. <laughs> Okay, so yeah. Oh, you probably didn't see that last little bit. Sorry, guys. All right, so that is, that is it. Let me zoom you out and we'll take a look at the whole page. All right, and here is the final product. I really had fun doing this with you guys. You can see the page is just a little warpy, but um, once the stickles dries, I'll kind of come back through and reshape the page and it should flatten itself out perfectly. It's really not that bad, um, but that happens with every every paper that uh, is not specifically watercolor. Actually, watercolor paper does that too. Um, but I'm hoping that you guys can see the fun stickles that are on there. Um, I think it just adds just a tiny bit uh, of fun to the page. And yeah, that is it for me. Yeah, I hope you guys really enjoyed this. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today. I hope that you join me for my next video next weekend, next Saturday. Uh, same time, same place. <laughs> And I will see you then. Thank you all so much for being here today. And until next time, I'll see you later. Bye. <music>